Welcome, my name's Ahmed, a free-to-play endgame player in Raid Shadow Legends. Today we're going to discuss the new fusion, Karato Fox Hunter. Obviously this video is a couple of days late, and for that I can only apologise. I've been very busy and today's the first opportunity I've had to make this video. The fusion itself seems to be popular amongst the content creators, and whilst I agree that the passive is unique and potentially interesting, the overall champion design does feel like it's missing something without the partner bonuses. I will still be getting the champion, but I don't think he'll change my account. That said, I think his best use will be in Tag Team Arena, an area I know many people struggle in. He will help greatly in countering the very tanky Duchess teams. However, overall, I think Romantu does a better job of this. But of course, not everyone has him, largely due to the gold TTA gating. Thus, for anyone wanting to push further in TTA, this champion could be a key component. So on to the fusion itself. It seems to me that Plarium is setting us up for a rough ride, to be honest. What I've seen so far, the point requirements are higher again, and the rewards in each event appear to be getting worse. Plarium seem to rate these Chaos Ore very highly. In this fusion, the Summon Rush has very high point requirements and falls a week before a 2x Sacred. This is extremely unkind and really will strain the resources of many players. There are also two very long champion training. One is running from the 14th to the 19th, and the other from the 21st to the 25th. I'm concerned that the point requirements in both of these will be quite ugly, particularly the second one, the champion training tournament. Typically, the tournaments are less rewarding than the events. The events are the ones we would normally see the legendary tomes if there is one available. And I feel like there could be one on the vent starting on the 14th that runs through CVC. But the tournament itself, between the 21st and 25th, that's a long time for a tournament and usually the rewards are very bad. So I'm very cautious about what we're going to see there. I think in terms of energy crunch, both champion trainings are obviously going to cause us some potential difficulties especially as they coincide with dungeon events. In the first one, we have Spider, and in the second one, we have Fire Knight. Furthermore, the first big crunch is during CBC. That's not so much an issue because it enables us to do both Spider and Champion Training during CBC, which typically allow us to get a good amount of CBC points. So at least the event calendar has lined up nicely in terms of where we would like to be focusing our attention during CBC anyway. For the champion chase over the 18th to the 21st, we should be in a position where we could fuse three of the epics and get a relatively easy 750 points. That being said, during the champion training event, we will rank up all the rares required such that we're in a position to fuse during the champ chase. In terms of summoning, I myself am going to front load. I'm going to target the summon rush and I'm going to look to complete to that entirely. In fact, I'm going to go all the way down to the feast at 8,500 points. Now, I'm not recommending everyone do that. It really just depends on, on your own account and what resources you have. I myself have been saving shards for a long time and looking at the calendar here, I think I would be better served doing the summon rush now, getting a copy of the epic, knowing how many sacreds I need to put in to get that done, and then being in a position where I don't have to summon anything during the champ chase. I obviously could still summon during the champ chase as well if I decided I wanted a copy of the epic, but at least this way I know I've got all my bases covered. I've got the epic in the bag, and I don't have to summon under the RNG of a champion chase. The beauty of a summon rush is we know precisely the number of shards required. There is no RNG. My rationale is if you have a limited number of sacreds, using 9 here and topping up with mystery shards is enough to guarantee the fusion from a shard perspective. If you used 5 sacreds to get the rare, I'm not sure 4 sacreds would be enough in the champion chase to get the other rare required. It's not a risk I would be taking. In terms of what days I'm going to summon, I'm going to go after Sakir tomorrow and Rotos on Monday. So if I need to summon around 17 sacreds, I will likely pull 7 on the Sunday looking for Sakir. If I obviously get Sakir, I'll stop earlier and then I'll put 10 in on the Monday to go for Rotos. 
either champion would be great for me. Like both would be would be fun to have on the account, and I could definitely do things with either of them. I don't necessarily think I'll get either. So other than the excessive shard requirements, I think this fusion is going to be relatively straightforward. So given that the first energy crunch is going to be during CVC, at the moment I am saving all the energy rewards that we are having in tournaments right now, such as the Tag Team Arena energy, the Classic Arena energy, and any other ancillary energy that we're getting on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm going to hoard until CVC starts, and then I can focus all of my resources on Spider, completing the Dungeon Divers, and then doing as much of the Champion Training as I can. Hopefully there will be a Legendary book in the Champion Training event. If we very quickly have a look at Karato's kit, on the A1, we've got a triple hitter, which is always nice to have a triple hit. And not so many champions have the weaken. They tend to favor giving people decreased defense on the A1. So it's a nice alternative to have to some of the other attack-based champions that do decreased defense on the A1. The A2, you know, we have a two-turn stun, which is useful for certain crowd control situations, particularly with a two-turn stun. There aren't that many champions that do that. But this skill only really becomes exciting if Yumeko is on the same team, and the reality is probably 95 to 99% of us are never going to pull her, so we kind of have to discount that. If you're lucky enough to get her, then, you know, this champion becomes significantly better, but for most of us, we'll have to assume that that isn't a realistic proposition. Then in the A3, we have an attack all enemies with when booked, 100% block active skills. Again, the skill is improved if Yumeko's on the team, but we'll have to pretend that doesn't exist. AoE block active skills is actually a very interesting ability. I used to use Countess Lix for that exact skill uh, in my one of my TTA teams prior to when I got Romantu. Romantu effectively replaced Countess within my TTA setup. Prior to that, Block active skills on an AoE basis was, was extremely useful. But as we know, you always have to balance accuracy and damage for attack-based nukers. And unfortunately, without Yumeko on the team, it is not an irresistible debuff. And given our best use case for Karato is to target or counter the very tanky Duchess teams, I expect we'll be building him with near enough zero accuracy and again these these debuffs effectively become ignored but what i do think is potentially interesting in this kit is for some people that are struggling with doom tower having a two turn block active skills for ways is actually very useful and there are some flaws where this comes in extremely extremely useful lastly on the passive you know, this is where this champion is unique within the game. The fact that his damage cannot be decreased by enemy passive skills or masteries give us this unique utility. Like I said, I think Romantu ultimately is the better champion for this via his block passive skills uh, ability, um, but not everyone has him, and I think Karato will be a great substitute for those who do not have Romantu in enabling them to target those very tanky teams. Right, thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful for you. Please like, comment and subscribe. Any feedback is very welcome and good luck getting this fusion. See you next time.